We're going to factor ax squared plus bx plus c. We went, we went over this yesterday. And let's recall the steps. I'm just going to write them down from yesterday. Step one, All right, we're going to determine a pair of numbers whose product equals a times c and whose sum is b. OK, so remember yesterday, the first term multiplied to x squared, that first constant is a. So a here is 2. And then we have the bx term, the middle term. b here is 11. And then we have the constant term, 15. So in this question here, the product needs to be, what did we say yesterday? What's 2 times 15? That's 30. And then the sum needs to be, what's the, what's the b value? 11. Go back here. a times c, 2 times 15 is 30. That's where we got this value here. And then my b term here is 11. So the product has to be a times c, in this case, 2 times 15, which is 30. And the sum has to be 11. So from yesterday, remember, what two numbers? We have to find a pair whose product is 30 and whose sum is 11. What are the numbers? Six and five? Six and five? OK. Let's double check. Is six times five 30? Is six plus five 11? It sure is. So we found the pair of numbers. OK. Now let's go with step two. Step two, we said rewrite the bx term using numbers found in step one. So the numbers you found in step one, we're now going to rewrite that bx term. So what, do, what were we talking about? What, what do I mean? Do you guys remember? You have, let's write it down. We were given 2x squared plus 11x plus 15. So what do we mean by rewrite the bx term? Right, using 6 and 5, rewrite this bx term as 6x plus 5x. This is the bx term. <clears throat> So we did that, meaning we have 2x squared plus 6x plus 5x plus 15, OK? So that was our step two from yesterday. It's the rewrite step. And then finally, what was step three? Yep. Factor by grouping. So this is the reason you learned factor by grouping. OK, so you're going to group the first two terms and the last two terms, since there's four terms here. Factor by grouping, that's our last step. So let's try that out. Greatest common factor of 2x squared and 6x is 2x. The quotient was or is x plus 3. What's the greatest common factor of the next two? Is that 5? What's the quotient here? x plus 3. Um, this is addition, so this is addition. And do we find a common term? What's common? The x plus 3 is common. Final answer is, let's put it in black. Final answer is x plus 3 times 2x plus 5. So this is a three-step process we went over yesterday to factor things that look like this, ax squared plus bx plus 1, where a, remember, remember what we said, a here, let's, let's recall, a is not equal to the value 1. So we're going to do this procedure again over and over uh, as many as times as, as we have to in order to get things consistently right 
and we are factoring. So this is number one. And let's see what number three is. Number three says 3x squared plus 13x plus 4. We're going to factor this. So I need a pair of numbers whose product is what number? Remember, this is A, B, and C. A times C is, what's 3 times 4? 12. And my sum has to be the B value, which is 13. 13. <clears throat> okay, so go back. Sum is 3 times 4, which is 12. Right here. My B value is 13. That goes here. So give me a pair of numbers whose product is 12, but whose sum is 13. 12 and 1, good. Let's check. 12 times 1 is 12. 12 plus 1 is 13. OK. So our rewrite step, 3x squared plus 12x plus 1x plus 4. And that's my step 2. I'm sorry. Let's get this out of the way. Here's step 2. You guys OK with that? OK. Now factor by what? By grouping, group the first two terms, the last two terms. OK, what's uh, common? What's the greatest common factor? Four. Well, 3 and 12, what's the greatest common factor? Is that 3? x squared and x, greatest common factor? x. What's the quotient? x plus 4. Greatest common factor of 1 and 4 is 1. What's the quotient? x plus 4. Remember. Addition, addition. We now can factor out the common term, x plus 4, and x plus 4 is common. So your final answer is going to be x plus 4 times 3x plus 1. And that's number 3. Okay, so this is the stuff that we did yesterday. And let's see what we get here for number five. We have 4x squared plus 21x plus plus five. <clears throat> okay. My product and my sum. So A is 4, B is 21, and C is 5. So the product is 4 times 5, which is 20. The sum is just the b value, which is 21. Is that true? You guys remember that? Here's my a times c. 4 times 5 is 20. And then finally, the b term at 21 is my sum. So what two numbers, give me a pair, multiply it together, is 20, but when added is 21? 20 and 1, OK. That looks like it's okay, right? 20 times 1 and 20 plus 1. So it looks like you're good. So we have 4x squared plus 20x plus 1x plus 5. That's step 2, the rewrite step. Factor by grouping. What comes out of the 4x squared and the 20x? What's the greatest common factor? 4x. What's your quotient? x plus 5. Greatest common factor of 1x and 5. Isn't that 1? Quotient is x plus 5. Addition, addition. OK. And then you notice we have a common x plus 5 term. So final answer x plus 5 times 4x plus 1. OK, anybody have any questions on number 5? Isn't, isn't this what we did um, yesterday? All right? Let's see number 7. Let's 
2x squared plus 11x minus 6. Number 7. So remember, A, B, C. And so now, again, we need our product to be a value and my sum to be a value. What's 2 times negative 6? Is that negative 12? And then my b value is what? Is 11. OK, so product's negative 12, sum is 11. So what two numbers multiply together is negative 12, but when added is positive 11. Is it 12 and negative 1? Is it, what do you think? Let's see. 12 and negative 1. Let's see. 12 times negative 1 is negative 12. 12 plus negative 1 is positive 11. 12 and negative, it has to be a negative 1. Okay, double check. Because it does have to satisfy both criteria. It has to be both um, negative 12 as a product and positive 11 as a sum. So step number three, we have what? 2x squared plus 12x minus 1x minus 6. So what step comes next? What do, you, what do we do now? Factor by, factor by grouping. 2x squared and 12x, what's the greatest common factor? 2x, what's your quotient? The x plus 6. Now, go to the, the negative here. Be careful. It has a negative sign. Remember this? So we're going to have a negative out here. All right. Greatest common factor, 1 and 6. Isn't that 1? The quotient's going to be x divided by 1 is x. 6 divided by 1 is 6. What's my sign going to be, positive or negative? This sign's going to be positive. Does anybody know why again? Yeah, when you distribute here, right, you're going to have to be consistent with the signs. All right, that's good. Um, do we have a common factor, x plus 6? Sure do. So let's see, the final answer will be x plus 6 times 2x minus 1. Number 7. OK, isn't that kind of everything that we did yesterday? All right, let's see what number nine looks like. All right, what a difference a day makes, right? 3x squared minus 17x plus 10. So I get A, B, C. Okay, product has to be 30. The sum has to be what number? It's negative 17. Let's go back here. Right? A times C. 3 times 10 is 30. That's where we got the 30. And then I would say my B value is right here. It's negative 17. Oops. Got to see that. Okay. All right. You guys okay with that one? Let's move this a little over here. Okay, so let's go through the process. Give me a pair of numbers whose product is positive 30 and whose sum is a negative 17. Negative 2 and negative 15. Let's double check. Okay, negative 2 times negative 15, positive 30. Negative 2 plus negative 15. Is that negative 17? Looks like. Okay. All right, let's go through this. We get 3x squared minus 2x minus 15x plus my 10. Okay, that's the rewrite step from yesterday. We're just rewriting the bx term. And then factor by, factor by grouping. So greatest common factor of 3x squared and 2x, what is it? x. x. And then what's the quotient? 3x minus 2. Good. Now be careful because what we have here is a negative sign. So you're going to have to put a negative sign out here. It's already going to be a minus sign. 
So I need now the greatest common factor of 15x and 10. Five, okay. Five. Now what's the quotient? Now let's think. 15x divided by 5 is 3x. 10 divided by 5. What's 10 divided by 5? That's 2. Now what sign should be here? Plus or minus? Minus. And you say, why does it have to be minus? Because when you distribute a negative times a negative, better be a positive here. Okay. So this goes back to, really, what I would say is your factor by grouping homework. Right? And notice, in factor by grouping, do we have a common term here, 3x minus 2? Sure do. So our final answer is going to be 3x minus 2 times x minus 5. Right? You guys have factored. What do you think? Right? From, just like from yesterday, the cobwebs are pretty clear. Or you're clearing out those cobwebs. Remember, you're going to have to do a lot of these questions to do it in your sleep. You know? So let's try some more here. Number 11, 5x squared minus 3x minus 2. I'm going to get an A here, a B here, and a C here. So let's go through this. See, my product has to be A times C, negative 10. And then my sum has to be negative 3. So let's go back and make sure we're doing this. 5 times negative 2. Is that negative 10? Sure is. B is negative 3 right here. So let's double check. Negative 3 for B. Sum has to be negative 3. OK, what two numbers multiply together is negative 10, but when added, is negative 3. Negative 5 and positive 2. Well, negative 5 times positive 2 is negative 10. Negative 5 plus 2, is that negative 3? Sure is. Those are the numbers. So let's do the re rewrite step. 5x squared minus 5x plus 2x minus 2. Okay, factor by grouping. 5x squared and 5x, what's your greatest common factor? Well, 5 and 5, it's going to be 5. So GCF is 5x. What's the quotient? x minus 1. 2x and 2. 2. 2x divided by 2, isn't that x? 2 divided by 2 is 1. Let's look at the signs. Plus, what goes here? Plus, and then this is going to be a minus. So when we take a look at this, again, we have common, common, x minus 1 times 5x plus 2. And you are done. All right, you guys okay with that one? Is that easy or is that hard? Uh oh. <laughs> Here we go. 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. How many do we have to do again? Remember? A lot of these. A, B, C. Let's see if we can do this faster. All right, my product is going to be negative 3. My sum is positive 2. A, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Positive 2 for my B value. OK, we're on the right track. All right. What pair of numbers multiply together is negative 3, but when added is positive 2? 3 and a negative 1. Let's double check. Is 3 times negative 1 negative 3? Yep. 3 plus negative 1, is that positive 2? Sure is. OK. 3x squared plus 3x minus 1x minus 1. Factor by grouping. 
Uh, greatest common factor of 3x squared and 3x is 3x. Quotient is x plus 1. Be careful. A minus and a minus goes there. Negative. GCF of 1x and 1. Isn't that just 1? Quotient. x divided by 1 is x. 1 divided by 1 is 1. My sign has to be positive. Good. x minus 1. x minus 1 is common. We're on our way. We get x plus 1. 3x minus 1. I mean x plus 1 is common. That's number 13. Okay, what do you guys think? Is that okay? Does that look good? All right. Number 15, we get 6x squared plus x plus 1. So we have a, b, and c. If it's just x, what's the b value? There's a 1 there. Good. Okay. Product has to be 6 times 1, which is 6. And then my sum has to be 1. So let's, let's double check here. 6 times 1 is 6. That's my product. Um, my B value is positive 1, so I need to know what two numbers multiply together. It's positive 6, but when added is a 1. 2 and 3? 15 says uh, it's negative 1. Yeah. Uh, it's minus 1. All right. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, so this is negative 6. What two numbers multiply together is negative 6. Right? But when added, but when added is, what is it? Positive 3, negative 2. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. 3 plus negative 2, is that positive 1? You're right. There you go. So I get 6x squared plus 3x, minus 2x, minus 1. First two, last two. What's the greatest common factor of 6x squared and 3x? 3x. What's my quotient? Is that 2x plus 1? Don't forget. Subtraction goes there. GCF of 2 and 1 is 1. Let's find the quotient. 2x divided by 1 is 2x. 1 over 1, 1. What's the sign have to be? Plus. Common, common. Here we go. 2x plus 1 times 3x minus 1. You are what? Done. It's number 15. Whew. OK. Anybody have any questions on this one? OK. Let's look at 17 here. Four x squared plus four x minus 15. So let's make sure we're going to write them all OK. So here's my, my a, my b, and my c. OK, so then now let's say, again, we have to have a what? A product that is negative 60 and a sum positive 4. Let's double check. 4 times negative 15. Is that negative 60? OK, and then I have a what? Plus 4 for a sum. That's that b value. OK. All right, what two numbers multiply together is negative 60, and when added is a positive 4. Is that negative 6 and 10? Double check. Negative 6 times 10, is that negative 60? Negative 6 plus 10, is that positive 4? OK. Let's write this down. 4x squared minus 6x plus 10x minus 15. So what happens now? Factor by grouping. First two, last two. What comes out of the first two? Is that a 2x? What's your quotient? 
2x minus my 3. Greatest common factor 10 and 15. What is that? 5. Five. Don't forget that's plus. All right, addition, addition, that's plus, so we're good. Now, what's the new quotient? 10x divided by 5 is? 2x. 15 divided by 5 is 3. There's subtraction. And guess what? You do have 2x minus 3 and 2x minus 3. That's common. So what's your, what's your final answer? 2x minus 3 times 2x plus 5. That's pretty good. All right, that's pretty good. Number 17. Nineteen, we have the following. Four x squared plus twenty one x plus five. A B C. So let's see what we have to have. Product is twenty and my sum is twenty one. Let's let's double check. A times c. 4 times 5, is that 20? Looks like positive 21 for b. There we go. So what's the pair of numbers? What pair? 20 times 1 or 20 and 1? Let's see. 20 times 1 is 20. 20 plus 1 is 21. Okay. All right. Good job. So we have 4x squared plus 20x plus 1x plus my 5. Factor by by grouping. 4x squared and 20x is 4x you get x plus 5. 1 and 5 that's 1. Don't forget the sign is positive. So it's positive 1 is my greatest common factor. 1x and 5. What's common is only that 1. x isn't even common. My quotient, isn't it going to be the number itself again? Right, x plus 5 divided by that 1. Notice, x plus 5 is common. So, final answer. x plus 5 times 4x plus 1. What do you guys think? Same process over and over again, all based on arithmetic. Number... 21. Let's see what 21 is. 10x squared minus 19x plus your 6. Okay, let's see. A, B, C. Let's find the product. Product is 60. Sum is negative 19. So let's double check. 10 times 6. Is that 60? Looks like. Negative 19. Negative 19. Here we go. What two numbers multiply together is positive 60 when added is negative 19. Mm. Negative 15, negative 4. Is it negative 15 and negative 4? Let's double check. Negative 15 times negative 4. Is that a positive 60? It looks like. Negative 15 plus negative 4. Is that a negative 19? It looks like. Okay, good. These are the numbers. So we get 10x squared minus 15x minus 4x plus 6. Four terms. Factor by? Factor by what? Grouping. First two, last two. What comes out of the first two terms? 5x. What's the quotient? 2x minus 3. Don't forget. Subtraction. Okay. Greatest common factor of 4x and 6. Is that a 2? Okay. Now, what's the quotient? 4x divided by 2 is? 6 divided by 2 is? And this has to be negative because when we distribute again, <coughs> the sign has to become positive for the last term there. And it will. Common 2x minus 3. Is that right? So let's write the final answer. 2x minus 3 times 5x minus 2. And we are done. 
Okay, that's number 21, so let's double check here. Ooh, look at that. We got more to do. Okay, 23. 3x squared minus, minus 17x, 23, plus our 5. So what we're going to have here now is, let's take a look, a, B, and C. So my product is 15. My sum is negative 17. So let's make sure. 3 times positive 5, is that positive 15? All right. And then a B value of negative 17. OK. That's negative 17. So I need a pair of numbers, multiply together is a positive 15, but when added is negative 17. Is that true? Let's double check. Did we write 23 down OK? Looks like we did. Oh, yeah. All right. So what's the pair of numbers? Yeah, where did I get 15? 23. 23. Is that 3x squared minus 17x plus 5? Okay, is 3 times 5, is that 8 times C? Yeah, 15. Looks like we're good. So what do you guys think? Multiply two numbers together, it's positive 15. Added is a negative 17. Is there any pair of numbers at work? No, there is no. So we're going to say... There's no pair of numbers. Well, what this means is that your polynomial is, is prime or not what? Factorable. So if there is no pair that exists, it's prime, it's not factorable. Okay, in other words, what you're looking at is done. That's the best you can do. It's prime, not factorable. Can't factor it. So, you know, we be careful with that. Sometimes it comes up. 4x squared minus 26x plus 15. So make sure we can actually do these things. A, B, and C. What's the product? What's 4 times 15? I think it's 60. And my sum is negative 26. Let's double check. Right? 4 times 15 is 60. My negative 26 is the B value. It's the sum. So I need two pairs of numbers multiply together is positive 60. And then when added is negative 26. What do you guys think? Is there any pair? I think they both have to be negative. Remember, to get a product that's positive, they're either both positive or both negative. If they're both positive, the sum's positive. If they're both negative, the sum is negative. So they're both negative because I have a sum of negative 26. So what are factors of 60? 1 and 60, 2 and 30, 4 and 15. Is that right? 5 and what? 5 and 12. Is that true? OK. 5 and 12, OK. 6 and what? 10. Any others? Seven, no, eight. Nine, what do you guys think? Not factorable. Four X squared. 
plus 8x minus 5. Boy, I hope they give us some that are factorable. Product has to be negative 20. Sum needs to be positive 8. So let's check. 4 times negative 5. Is that negative 20? Okay. Is my B value positive 8? Sure is. Okay. Give me a pair of numbers. Multiply together. 10 and negative 2. Why negative 2? Okay, 10 times negative 2, is that negative 20? 10 plus negative 2, is that positive 8? Okay, it looks like our, answer, our prayers are answered, right? <laughs> Just give me one that's factorable. <laughs> okay, first two, last two. Give me, what's your greatest common factor, 4x squared and 10x? Is that 2x? What's your quotient? 2x plus 5. Okay, be careful because I got subtraction. I better put subtraction down there. It's minus. Now, what's the GCF of 2 and 5 or 2x and 5? 1. 1, good. What's the quotient? 2x, 5, and it's plus. And the good news is we have a common term. And final answer, let's see what that is. 2x minus 1 times my 2x plus 5. And we're done. Isn't it 2x plus 5? Good, good point. Same thing, yeah. Let's be careful. Yeah, it's the same thing. In other words, remember, there's multiplication here. Okay? So the order in which you multiply doesn't matter. I can write this as 2x plus 5 times 2x minus 1, and then that's good as well. There you go. Okay. And that was number 27, so good. Try 29 here, 29. We get 9x squared minus 9x plus 2. Okay, so we have A, we have B, we have C. So my product has to be positive 18 while the sum is negative 9. So let's double check. 9 times positive 2 is positive 18. Negative 9 is my B value. So what two numbers multiply together is positive 18. But when added is negative 9. It looks like they both have to be negative. Is that true? Negative 6. What else? Negative 3. I think you're right. Double check. Negative 6 times negative 3. Is that positive 18? Negative 6 plus negative 3. Is that negative 9? OK, good job. So we got 9x squared minus 6x minus 3x plus a 2 factored by what? Grouping. What happens now? Greatest common factor, 9x squared and 6x. What is that? 3x. What's the quotient? 3x minus 2. Greatest common factor, 3x and 2 is 1, but be careful. We got minus here. We better put minus there. Okay, uh, 3x divided by 1, we have to find the quotient is 3x. 2 divided by 1 is 2, and this is going to be minus because when we distribute, that's going to be a plus. Again, 3x minus 2 is common. Now, how we write this is up to, up to you. I can put that common term first. Then I get a 3x minus 1. There we go. That's my procedure. Okay, 29. All right, let's see. 31. 4x squared plus 20x plus 25. So let's see what happens here. A, B, C. <clears throat> Product is 100 and the sum is 20. Let's double check to see if we're okay. 4 times 25 is 100. My B term is positive 20. So I need a pair of numbers. What are they? 
10 times 10. Does that work for us? Looks like it does. Okay. 4x squared plus 10x plus 10x plus R25. Factor by grouping. What comes out of the first two? 2x. What's the quotient? 2x plus 5. Is that true? Greatest common factor of 10x and 25. Isn't that 5? What's my quotient? 2x. 10x divided by 5 is 2x. 25 divided by 5, isn't that 5? That's plus. All right, almost there. 2x plus 5 is common. Is that true? Okay. 2x plus 5 times 2x plus 5. That's number 31. What do you guys think about that one? Is that okay? Okay, isn't that the same process we've been going through over and over again? 33, 16x squared minus 8x plus 1. We get our A value, our B value, our C value. So product is 16. The sum is negative 8. Let's double check here. 16 times positive 1 is positive 16. Negative 8 is B. Okay, what's a pair of numbers? Negative 4 and negative 4. It is negative 4 times negative 4. Is that positive 16? Okay, what's negative 4 plus negative 4? You're right. Those are the numbers. Let's write these down. 16x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 1. Factor by grouping, 16x squared and 4x, what comes out? What's your quotient? So 4x minus 1. 4x and 1, greatest common factor. 1. Let's be careful. Yes. Minus. Subtraction goes there. Let's be careful. And quotient is 4x. 1. What goes between these two? Good. I'm in 4x minus 1. So 4x minus 1 times 4x minus 1, you are done. 33. 35. 4x squared, let's see. That's 16. Okay. 4x squared. Minus 4x plus 1. A, B, and what? And C. Let's see how this works. Product is 4. Sum is negative 4. So 4 times positive 1 is positive 4. And then my B value is negative 4. So what two numbers multiply together is going to be what? Positive 4, but when added is negative 4. Does that work? Negative 2 and negative 2? Okay. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. Okay, those are the pair. So let's do the second step. 4x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 1. First two terms, last two. Greatest common factor, 4x squared and 2x, what is it? Is that 2x? What's your quotient? 2x minus 1. Okay, do we have to be careful? Yep, minus sign is between them, so it's going to be negative. What's the greatest common factor of 2x and 1? Isn't that 1? Your quotient is going to be 2x, 1, and the sign is negative. You have to distribute. When you distribute, it's going to change to positive. So common, final answer, 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 
one. There you go. And then, by the way, to let you guys know, you can also write this as an exponential, meaning 2x minus 1 to the second power. We could have written the previous one as an exponential, 4x minus 1 to the second power. Only when they're like, when they're exactly like. Only they have the same exact base. In other words, this 2x here, this is what we mean by same exact base. 2x plus 5, 2x plus 5. That's an exponential. The base is 2x plus 5. And you're multiplying, so we can write it, you know, this way as well. And sometimes you see that in the back of the book. So, anyway. On the test, are you going to require that? Uh, either way would be fine. Either way. Okay. Good job. What do you guys think? Is factoring, is this procedure easy or is it difficult? What do you have to do? You have to work on these um, problems, even if you had to redo all these again, throw them away, you know, throw it away, your work, and then you start all over again. And because the, the, the point is that you master the procedure, you find those pair of numbers. And um, then you're factoring. So you have A, B, and C. So notice my procedure's done exactly the same way, even in the same colors. Product is negative 21. Sum is 20. So I'm going to go back here. 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. My B value is positive 20. There you go. Doing this procedure the same way over and over again until I can do it in my sleep. So anyway, give me a pair. Numbers multiplied is negative 21, but when added is positive 20. What is it? Negative 1 and positive 21. Does that work? Let's see, negative 1 times positive 21. That's negative 21. Negative 1 plus 21. Is that positive 20? Looks like these are the pair. So we'll write it down as 3x squared minus 1x plus 21x minus our 7. Factor by, by grouping now. You got four terms. What's your greatest common factor of 3x squared and x? x. x. What's the quotient? 3x minus 1. What's your greatest common factor of 21x and 7? What is that? 7. seven. What's the quotient? 3x minus, because isn't 21x divided by 7, 3x? And 7 divided by 7, 1? We have plus between them, and do you see anything that's common? 3x minus 1? Isn't that common, 3x minus 1? Final answer, 3x minus 1 times x plus what? 7.